seated at this time as we have our Advent narrations and scripture reading. We are continuing our celebration of the season of Advent, which means to come. It is the time when we get ready, preparing ourselves for Christmas. The first week, we celebrated the theme of hope. Again, we light up the first Advent candle, which reminds us of the hope and expectation of the Jewish people as they look forward to the coming Messiah. And it also reminds believers today to be filled with hope as we look forward to the coming kingdom. Last week, we focused on the theme of peace. Again, we light up the second candle, which reminds us of the peace that can only be found in Jesus Christ and that one day he will establish true peace on the earth. Today, we celebrate the theme of joy represented by a rose-colored candle. We light up the third candle, symbolizing the expectant joy God's people had for the promised Deliverer. On the night of Jesus' birth, listen to what the angels told the shepherds. Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. We joyfully celebrate because of what Christ's birth means for us, God displaying His love toward us, giving us the greatest gift of all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. One beloved carol sung during this time of year is the familiar Joy to the World. In reality, the author Isaac Watts didn't write this as a Christmas carol. It was actually based upon a New Testament interpretation of Psalm 98. Instead of celebrating Jesus as the baby in a manger, The song actually points to the second coming of Christ and the establishment of His kingdom on earth. As we sing this well-known hymn in a few moments, listen for the coming kingdom language Watts utilized throughout the song, such as, Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He rules the world with truth and grace. When Jesus came to the earth in flesh, He was not received by his own people as king. However, we know that one day when he comes again, the earth will receive her king. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. For unbelievers, this will be a terrifying realization. But for us as believers, think of the great joy we will receive seeing Christ rule and reign over all the earth. Jude closes his letter with this powerful benediction. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Well, we invite you to stand again with us as we joyfully sing to our King this morning, Joy to the World.
may be seated at this time, and uh, we have been just so thrilled to get to be able to do this once more. It's been two years since we've been able to have a Christmas program with the choir uh, or Easter or cantata, and so we're just thrilled to be able to do this again. This is our first time ever, though, to incorporate an orchestra, and so it is just such a neat experience getting to have these just different sound, and, and so just thankful for this crew that has worked diligently over the last few weeks. So we'd like to present uh, just an instrumental medley at this time of Christmas Carol, so we hope that you enjoy.
Come is such an appropriate word for this season. We have sung songs of Advent, which itself means to come. Throughout the Gospels, Jesus himself offered invitations for us to come to him, to find rest for our soul. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, to come and satisfy our hunger and thirst. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. To come to the living water. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. As we read part of the Christmas story, we see an invitation to an unlikely group of individuals. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Just as the shepherds responded in worship by glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, we invite you to come worship and adore Him this morning.
to God in the highest, glory to the newborn king. But why? Why does he deserve this praise and this glory? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Jesus is God. All praise due to the Father is due to the Son. He had to come. He had to be born. He had to take on flesh to take his role as king. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Jesus is to be praised. The king has been born. And yet in God's perfect will, nothing went how humanity thought it would. Praises of glory to God in the highest, praises about the newborn king, and praises of blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, turned into shouts to crucify him. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. Behold Jesus beaten and dressed in a robe with a crown of thorns. Jesus had to go to the cross. He had to submit to this humiliation in order to be worthy of being the true king, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus' exaltation was due because of his humiliation. As John the Baptist prophesied at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. But the Lamb who was slain was raised to life again and has become the Lion of Judah. And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, is conquered, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders I saw a lamb standing, as though it had been slain, with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne, and when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain. And by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. He is worthy because he has done it. He was born the king. He sacrificed himself to be worthy to establish his kingdom. Our king did not stay a baby. He did everything needed to be worthy and to be the king for all eternity. Come, let us behold him, not as Pilate stated, behold the man, but behold him, the lamb who was slain. Behold him, the conquering lion, who is worthy of all glory and praise. Who heard you? 
alone to wake as a child. He became like the least of us. Behold him, Jesus, Son of God, Messiah, the Lamb, the Roaring Lion. Oh, be still and behold him. He who dined with sinners and saints. The blind, the lost, and the lame. Even now he is in our midst. Behold him. He who chose a criminal's end, paid with blood to settle our debt. Very death as he rose to life. Behold him. Receive all praise, holy, holy.
I looked and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sit on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, who is and who was, for you have taken your great power and begun to reign. Then I saw heaven opened. And behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. On his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father.